Welcome to Unbreakable, the Resilience Indicator Toolbox. On this site, there are three different tools that can be used to estimate the benefits of investing in resilience to natural hazards. This tutorial will explain how to use them. In the Country tool, you can find out how to best build resilience in your country. In the Policy tool, you can compare different policy options on how they related to resilience building globally. More advanced users can use the Advanced tool to evaluate benefits of one or several specific interventions in a country. The indicator covers risk to floods, windstorms, earthquakes, and tsunamis. To get to either of the tools, you click on the link in the banner or select a tool in the boxes below, which also provides some more information about the tools. Let's assume that you are working with the government in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and you have been requested to assess the benefits of different policy options to strengthen resilience to hazards in the country. You are particularly interested in the benefit of strengthening early warning systems. To access the country tool, you click on the box. The pop-up that shows up provides more detailed information about the underlying model upon which the results are based. You can see here that the data used in the underlying model is from 2015. If you click on More, you can read a disclaimer and also access links to the data sources. You agree to the disclaimer to get to the tool. Here you are met with a short description, and if you remove the banner, there is a heat map of the variables of interest, which you will learn more about in this tutorial. Here you can see DRC on the map and how it compares to other countries. For more information, you scroll down, where you find a box in which you can insert DRC. Now you can see the main output indicators, which are the same as the ones on the heat map compared to the global average. If you hover over the information icon here, you access more information on the output indicators of interest. Risk to assets percentage of GDP is the annual repair and replacement cost for assets affected by disasters. Risk to well-being percentage of GDP measures the total impact of disasters on the population's well-being, taking into account the lower ability of poorer people to cope with and recover from the shock. This concept is based on the notion that a loss of $1 is more likely to affect a poor person's consumption than a rich person's, since the poor person may have fewer savings or lower access to insurance. And socioeconomic resilience indicates the ability of the population to cope with and recover from disasters. It is defined as the ratio of asset losses to well-being losses. A larger socioeconomic resilience means that a country's population can experience larger asset losses while maintaining its well-being. A resilience level of 50%, as you see here in DRC, means that $1 in asset losses from a disaster results in a $2 drop in national income. To put it in context, a socioeconomic resilience of 60%, close to the global average, means that a $1 in asset losses results in a $1.7 loss in well-being. If DRC would strengthen their resilience by 10% from 50 to 60%, they would decrease losses to well-being by 20%, which will translate into about 10.5 billion USD in avoided losses per year. Now, when you have a better understanding of what is being displayed here, you can turn to the drivers of this result. Scroll down to View Indicators. Under each category, you can now explore the underlying drivers of socioeconomic resilience. For example, you can see SP coverage is relatively low in DRC compared to the global average. 
Under economic indicators, you can also see that DRC is a very poor country, obviously affecting risk to well-being, as per the discussion earlier. Our policy of interest, access to early warning, is under vulnerability. And you can see here that 40% of the population has access. Finally, under exposure, you find that hazard risk is primarily driven by flood exposure of poor people. You can export these results by clicking on the PDF link. You can also download all of this data from all countries currently covered in the model by clicking on the CSV link. Let's switch to the policy priority view to explore what pre-selected policy options would strengthen resilience in DRC. Figures include the values of avoided losses in assets and well-being in millions of USD per year. Values are reported in both absolute terms and in relation to GDP. Here you can see that improving access to early warning would be an effective policy option, resulting in both huge avoided asset and well-being losses. This policy priority list can be exported by clicking on the PDF link. Now let's turn to the policy tool to compare the policy options to how they perform in other countries. The takeaway from the analysis in DRC is that investing in early warning seems to be a feasible option to strengthen resilience. How does it perform elsewhere? Let's select Universal Access to Early Warning in the drop-down list of policy options. You are presented with absolute and relative values of avoided asset and well-being losses, as you did in the Policy Priority view in the Country tool. But here you have the list of countries that benefit the most from this investment. DRC is not among the countries that benefit the most, perhaps because they already have a relatively high coverage of early warning. What about regionally? If you select only AFR countries, we see that DRC ends up in the top five for absolute and top 10 for relative values. Again, you can export the results by clicking on the PDF link. This simple policy tool only includes a set of pre-selected policies. If you want to evaluate the benefit for a specific policy outcome, the advanced tool is better suited. In your case, universal access might be very difficult and costly in a vast country like DRC. You might want to look at other more realistic policy targets. You therefore head to the advanced tool and select DRC. Now you can adjust the sliders of each underlying indicator to assess the impact on risk and resilience. Under vulnerability, you find access to early warning. First, let's see the benefit of universal access to early warning and percentage GDP and socioeconomic resilience. You adjust the slider to 100% coverage. You can see that it results in a 0.7% increase in resilience. Now let's say your suggestion is to increase coverage from 40 to 60%. You click on Reset. Adjust the slider again to 60% coverage. The socioeconomic resilience now improved by 0.04%, driven by both decrease in risk of assets and well-being as percent of GDP. You can export the results and bring them to your client.